الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى May peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today's talk is on al-istikhara. And let me define it. Al-istikhara is an invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking him to choose what is best for you. Al-istikhara is one of the wonderful uh, prescribed matters in Islam that strengthen the relation and the link between the servant and his Lord in all affairs. What is al-istikhara? The hadith was narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who said that the Prophet وسلم, was keen on teaching us istikhara for every and each matter as he used to teach us the surahs from the Quran. This is the statement of the companion. Now this shows first how important istikhara is to the extent that the companion is Comparing it to the Prophet's keenness on teaching them Quran. What also is clear from this introduction is that istikhara is to be offered for each and every matter. So the common understanding that istikhara is only for big issues and big decisions is not right. We need Allah. Allah's help and choice for us in all matters, small or big. The common understanding is of istikhara is being offered only when you are confused about making a decision, only when you have a choice between two or three things, which one to choose is also not correct. Even if you are determined on doing one thing, you still need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to choose the best for you. Because we think that this is best for us, but Allah knows best if this is the case or not. So istikhara is to be offered on all matters. Of course, all matters where we have choice. But there are things where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already chosen the best for us. All obligatory things we don't make istikhara for. We don't make istikhara to pray or to fast. Sisters would not make istikhara whether they will put hijab or not because these are things that Allah has already chosen the best for us in them. Next, the companion said and told us what the Prophet told them. He said that the Prophet told them if any one of you intends to do something he should offer two rak'ahs other than the obligatory prayers, other than the obligatory prayers. So it can be either after making any of the sunnahs, sunnah for fajr for example, or maghrib, or whatever, or you can pray to rak'ahs particularly for this purpose. Then say, O Allah, I consult you for your knowledge, and appeal to you for your power and ask you for your great bounty. For you are able and I am not. 
You know and I do not. And you know all the hidden matters. This is the supplication you start with when you make istikhara. So far you haven't come to the issue. But that's the etiquette of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you come to the issue, we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His names and attributes, by showing our need to Him and to His bounty and mercy. That's an etiquette that the Prophet sallallahu taught us in many supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not in particular the two attributes mentioned in here which are the knowledge and the power. One of the etiquettes of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to use the appropriate names and attributes for the issue of the supplication. And since here we are asking Allah's help and choice for us, we particularly mention His knowledge because He knows best what is best and not for us and with His power because He has the power to cause to us what is good. And then you continue by saying, O oh Allah, then you come to the subject now. O oh Allah, if you know that this matter, and you name it, if you know that this matter is good for me, for my religion, my livelihood, and for my life in the hereafter, then make it happen, and ease it for me, and bless me with it. And if you know that this matter is not good for me, for my religion, my livelihood, and my hereafter, then divert it from me, and keep me away of it, and choose what is good for me, wherever it may be, and make me pleased and content with it. So, this is how istikhara is offered. What next? You offer the istikhara, what next? Many believe that after offering istikhara, they have to see some sign of how to proceed in the form of dream or so. While this may happen, it is not necessarily to happen. And in fact, believing that you must see a dream or so is very serious because if you don't see a dream, and most of the time you don't, or you will not, then you will think that istikhara did not work. And this is wrong. Invocating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always works. But works in the correct way, not in the way that we mistakenly think of. So, what do you do next? You proceed with what you determined. You proceed with the full conviction that whatever you do would be the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you've already asked Him for that. So, you proceed and whatever happens is Allah's choice for you. If you find it good, then you'd be thankful, for, thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it appears to you otherwise, then know that it only appears to you so. But maybe there's a lot of good in it. And remember that Muslims don't judge good and evil by the materialistic things. Sometimes calamities and adversities, adversity, adversity and tough times are good and of benefit to Muslims. So brothers and sisters, Istikhara is a complete course of faith education. It strengthens the relation between the servant and his Lord. It makes one, the one of us firm when he takes decisions because he feels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to his side. It makes him full with content and satisfaction of the outcomes regardless of how they appear to him 
because he knows that or he believes that this is Allah's choice for him. And finally, he would be saved from the painful feelings of regretfulness and sorrow. He would never say, I wish I did that. I wish I didn't, I didn't do that. No. He would accept and be content with what happened, knowing that he did consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that was Allah's choice for him. So let's keep doing this wonderful thing, al-istikhara. Let's consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to him in all matters and ask him that he will choose the best for us. And Allah knows best. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم